turn to Acts chapter 2, 32 to 38. Acts chapter 2, 32 to 38. And I, I want us to look at how the, 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 the salt, that it penetrate, it reaches the heart when it's doing what it's prescribed to do. So 232 to 38 says, this Jesus have God raised up where, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended, into the heavens but he said himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ now when they heard this now this is what I want us to hear because they had to get the word out to make a difference so here they say, and this is how we know that the word of God is working. They were pricked in their heart, salt being penetrating, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, we know when the salt is working, then we have people's hearts and minds saying, well, what should I do? What should I do? What should we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost what shall we do the salt shall make people say what shall I do the salt then the salt preserves from putrefaction and that is the process of decay the process of decay. So when we think about how salt is, salt is a granular and it's loose for usage. It is not stuck together. So we are styled, we are styled as grains of salt. We may not always be able to clump together, but we can do it as God have told us to do it. We are grains. So just think about each grain working to the kingdom of Jesus Christ and how this world really, you know we do a lot of talking, but how this world really would be turned upside down if each grain would just do what each grain is supposed to do. See, this grain is not talking about I need to be over in your lane to be with you. Amen. Amen. So here's a teacher. If you're not a teacher, that's okay. Appreciate that grain. That's right. That's right. Because if he just does his grain, we're going to be all right. So just think, look at everyone in the church. Just think of you as a grain and if you did what God said for you to do. Just the ones that's in here. Amen. For us to be the grains that Christ has called us to be. And he's called us to be salty. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now Mark 9, 49 and 50, you know, because we talked about synoptic. And then we looked at Mark and he has another spin on salt. Everyone will be salted with fire. Everyone will be salted with fire. We will go through purifying process. This is the step. If the purifying process is skipped, then we become a salt substitute. If this purifying process and it's the easiest one to skip because it is a process and it does not feel good. And oftentimes we want to not hurt. I think it's just human beings. Just We don't want to hurt. Nobody gets up and say, I just like to hurt today. But there is a process for each believer. When I first came into the church, I was 18 years old. And I just thought when I said yes, all of my sins were gone. That's what I thought. I got into some trouble because that wasn't factual. I didn't do any work. I just said yes. I did what the preacher told me to do, and I continued to do what I wanted to do. 
because I, I didn't know about a process. I, I didn't know. And then I thought that by me doing that, that everything would be gone magically. We would like that. But that's not the process. And when I fail, I realized, oh, that stuff is still there. But it wasn't until I fell, I realized I still had all that stuff. I said yes to begin the process, but I didn't start the process. You got to start the process and allow God to do what he needs to do. Because each one of us have more fat on one side than on the other. Right? Maybe your fat is not like mine. So you don't need to be trimmed there. But I need to be trimmed there. Because it's causing me to get into trouble. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about the natural fat. I'm talking about spiritual fat. That's not good for us. Because we need to trim it down. And trimming don't feel good. Because some of that stuff we want to keep. We want to hold on to it. Because that's my crutch. You say, you're you going to take my crutch away, Jesus? I need that. I need that wall to keep people out because I've been hurt. I need that wall. And God is saying, I need to just remove brick by brick. And every time that brick is removed, you feel the air. And you start saying, I, I, I just need to reach back and I need to plug it back in. And God is saying, there's no more plugging. I have removed that brick. Right? So there is a process. And we don't want to skip that process. We as the people of God should be seasoned with the gospel, with the salt of grace. We must be salty so we can diffuse it to others. Others who have the same unsavory stuff that has rotten and began to putrefy our smell with distinctive smells that we once had. See, we can't escape that. Oftentimes you're trying to deal with my injury and you've been injured. That's what helps you be better. Because you can have empathy and sympathy because you know what you've been through and you know how it smells. That smell didn't leave you. You still got a memory. And that smell is a good smell and it don't leave you. So you'll be humble before God. So we can help people. We can help people in the grace of God and not tear them down. We should be lifting people up. Christ does the cutting, not us. Because he knows how to stitch. He knows what to cut. He knows how much to cut. He knows when to cut. He knows when to back up. He knows when the anesthesia is needed. He knows when you just need to bear down. He knows all of that and I don't. And you don't. But we, what we do know is the word of God and we can season it with grace. We don't have anything to prove. we want to make sure that we're reaching out. We're being those grains that can reach out and we can season with grace their lives to make a difference in their lives that they can reflect and say, I can make it. When a person leaves our presence, they need to leave our presence with hope to know that they can make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if the salt loses its saltiness, most of the salt used in Israel, that's why God used, Jesus Christ used the salt analogy or the metaphor because they knew of the salt. Because their salt, their main salt came from the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea was few, full of impurities. Can you think about that? We were once Dead Seas, full of impurities. And because of the impurities, the salt often was caused, it, the, their, the, the savior, the flavor, was often depleted. So that's why Jesus Christ can let them know about the salt because they knew about that salt that was being used. We are not using, if we are not using prayer, meditation of the word, I didn't just say read the word, I said meditating on the word, fasting to keep our wick trim, then we will become unsavory. So here are some warning signs. Unfaithfulness, excuses, hard to get along with, not willing to forgive, 
causes division and the big one fleshly ways no one needs to define that because fleshly ways we know when we're walking in the flesh and when we're walking in the spirit praise God it's just good to be real with yourself Hallelujah, because that's the only way we can be helped. So these are our warning signs. When we begin to move from the purpose that God has intended us to move, we recognize, uh, oh, those are the warning signs. And, and the good thing about it is because I can imagine, as a teacher, I can imagine that, that red light flashing, warning, warning, warning. You're about to go into a wrong place. Warning, warning, warning. Wake up. Hallelujah. Now, how can it be made salty again? When I thought about this scripture, praise God, it is impossible with man to make salt salty again. It is utterly impossible, but not with Jesus. But not with Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. David realizes because God is his shepherd. Psalms 23 and 3 says, He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So if you have lost the saltiness from your lives, there is yet still hope. Because what the enemy wants us to think that you're a lost cause, I'm a lost cause, but we know that he's alive. Praise God. He is the father of lies. To know that there is hope today if the saltiness, if you have lost the Savior, that Christ Jesus is here for you today to regain what you lost and get on the road back again as the salty grain that he needs to use. That he needs to use. There is yet hope. So the last part of our base scripture says it is no longer good for anything when we are unsavory except to be thrown out and trampled by men if the people of God refuse to be restored they are no longer effective in carrying the gospel because it's not about how well a person makes you feel how you jump and shout roll and spit or whatever happens because some of that is just we're just emotional people and then do with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we like that person, we gonna move. And I know they be saying a whole lot of stuff. My husband may remember, but we were at a district meeting just to prove the point. And the spirit was high and we was rejoicing. And the guitar player was saying, all of you beautiful ladies, get on up. Everybody was rejoicing because nobody heard what he was saying, but we were just rejoicing to the music. And he was talking about all of you beautiful ladies, get on up. So that's why I know about Jesus and not about us Amen. praise God and we better keep our eyes and ears open yes. praise God because there's a difference when the spirit of the Lord is high and when there's just a lot of emotionalism yes. 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 praise God it's easy to get with somebody you like but you better be listening to the word of God Amen. to make sure that person is approved of what the Jesus is saying yes. praise God not just because of a friendship because that friend could be off because sometimes we all get some off times is that right and we all need to be brought in. But if you're not listening, you just say, I'm your friend. I'm, we both going to be off. So we don't want to do that. We want to hear the word of God. Yeah. Praise God. So our salt content determines our obedience. Yeah, yeah. And that brings in our second scripture, John 13, 34 through 35. So prior to Jesus going to the cross, he began to speak to his disciples to prepare them in his departure. So this is where he comes in with this scripture. And he wants to validate and make it firm for them. And he lets them know, 34 says, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. That ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. But this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one to another. Yeah. Now there's eight different types of love. But the love only that we can do this is, is by the agape love. Yeah. We can't do it any other way. Right. Praise God, any other way. There's been, even in my own family, 
there's some brokenness. And you say, oh God, the love. We break up over stuff. Oh my God. Stuff that will decay and rot and you'll get something else. Praise God, I was talking to my cousin just the other day and, and people just, they, you don't even know who they are when somebody leaves here. They scoping to see what they can get. But that's not the type of love. And that song that we used to sing, give me my flowers while I live. That love, that love that will forgive me. That type of love. So this agape love is a selfish love. It's the highest and most radical love. This love of how you forgive when you said, I'll never talk to him or her again in my life. But this is that love that it takes. It can't take that love. If you do me, I do you. If you don't do me, then I won't do you. See, this love takes out all the slogans that people have about the reconnection and the restore, restoration that we need for one another. Because if I cannot love then I don't have that agape love that Christ is telling them and recommending to his disciples. It is an unconditional love, and it's truly a love bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than ourselves. As Sister Henry said, you think you say you're not going to connect with them again, you're not going to help them again, but because of that agape love down on the inside that you can't escape for, if you really love Jesus, you got to grit and bear it. You don't like it. Love don't say I'm going to like what I need to do. But my inward man is pulling me to righteousness. And you do it, even if you rehearse to yourself what you're not going to do. And if they come again, and what I'm going to give, and then Jesus, when he, they come into your presence, something changes, and you begin to do stuff that you said you would never do. It's boundless. How could you say how much love? How can you put a measure on love? So you can put a measure on all the other types of love, but you can't put a measure on agape love. You can't say how far you will go because you'll find yourself going to the hill. I'm going to tell you, my mother was the symbol of love. When I think about my mother, oh my God, she loved when my brother came that she knew not about with my daddy. She loved him, and nobody could say that Leland was not her child. She loved people from the street, from the alley. She would give them whatever she had. She loved. Now, a lot of us go to the nail shops and things, and we know the mannerism of where we go. When my mother was ill, the person that did her nails would not let me even put her in the car. He loved my mother. But what he really loved was the love of Christ that she had deep down inside. She let us know, don't be angry for long at people. Don't do that. And people, do you know sometimes when you love the agape love, you might feel like you're abused even more because people feel like they can get over on you. You just don't worry about any of that because we don't know when the hour will come and we want to be loved. We want to make sure we got that agape love because people feel like, well, you know, they don't, if, but we know because the spirit of Christ revealed it to us. It's free from desires and expectations. It doesn't love because you give me something. It loves when you don't have anything to give. I, we can still yet love. That's the agape love. Yeah. It loves regardless of the flaws and shortcomings of others. And I'm going to put it loves when we don't love ourselves. Because we sit here, but many of us have some issues with just loving me. Yeah. We feel like if we just lose that extra whatever, we just do that extra whatever, we still the same person. We may be smaller, we may be a little larger, we may be a little taller, whatever it may be. But you got to love yourself. You got to let that agape love come down on the inside 
just like the, 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 the anointing, that oil that ran on Aaron's beard, and that anointing has to begin, but you got to open up to let God love you because there's some things from way young that you still haven't got over, and you don't love yourself. You look great. You look good on the outside, but God needs you to love yourself that you can love somebody else because I can't give you what I don't have. So it's okay for the outside to look good. It's, it's all good. But the inside must be equally beautiful because it does shine on the outside. Not only my flaws, but my shortcomings. When I don't hit the 100 mark, when I don't do what you want me to do or expect to do, you still love me the same. The love haven't changed. It has actually increased because of the love of Christ. This love accepts, forgives, believes for the greater good. That's what this love does. And when we think about, I concentrated not on the third scripture, but I concentrated on the first two scriptures because I feel like those were the hinges um, on what we as salt need to be representing. I cannot be the salt if I cannot love. I'm not the salt. I become the salt substitute because I can still lift my hands, but I'm the salt substitute. I can still get with the choir. I can still rejoice. I can give my tithes. I can do all those things but be the salt substitute. I'm not making any changes in anyone's life. I am a salt substitute. I can keep coming here. I can be on air and auxiliary. I can be obedient to the pastor and wife, but I can be a salt substitute. And when I'm a salt substitute, I'm ineffective to what God needs me to be. So I encourage us on today, if we're going to season the world, we want to make sure that we remain salty, that we're making sure that we're the grain and we're perfecting that grain, your grain, that we can give God the glory. Let's stand. We can give God the glory. 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 Hallelujah. We can give God the glory. We can give God the glory. Hallelujah. 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 For the great things that he have done. It is that time. We're going to ask for the altar workers to come. Hallelujah. It doesn't say because you've been in the church for a while that you don't need this what must I do prayer. What must I do? It is just not those that don't know Jesus Christ for the what must I do. Praise God. Some of you are facing some situations and you don't know. Sometimes situations need some confirmment from someone else. You don't know. You don't know which way to go. You don't know what to do. Praise God. You don't know Jesus. The altar is open. The scripture said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. We don't want to harden the heart. We don't want our heart to be hardened because we don't know our last breath. We don't know when it's our time. But what we do know, that if we're ready, if we're ready, that's what Jesus wants us to be. Ready. Don't deny the opportunity. At this time, we're asking you to come. Those of you who need that prayer, you're sick in your body. You're praying in proxy for someone else. Come. You need to rededicate your lives. Come. Oh, God. Your children. Other things are going on, and you just need prayer. Come. 
You're standing for your children. You're standing for your child. Come. Hallelujah. 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 There's a need. There's a need. There's a need. There's a need for your help. There's a need. 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 It shall a boat. There's a need. There's a need. Jesus, I Hallelujah. Love you, I love oh. oh God, there's a need. There's a need. Oh God. There's a need. Hallelujah. Jesus can meet that need. We are here to pray with you. But it's Jesus and your faith connected. That's gonna meet that need. Every head is bowed. Every eye closed. This is the time to give it to Jesus. He is the salt of the world. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything you've already done. And we come to you today, God, because you are God. We're bringing all of our sorrows, all of our burdens. You said to cast them on you. And Father, today and this morning, as the altar of God is filled with prayers of righteousness, touch these that have come, lift heavy burdens, pull down strongholds, Break the power of the enemy. Let your word have a free course, God, that the salt, God, will season the world, that they would be, burden will be lifted, stronghold will be broken, and the anointing, God, will destroy every yoke. Give peace now. Give peace. Open doors. Make ways out of no ways. Heal the sick, God. Heal the mentally sick in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you the glory. And God, we give you the glory. And God, we give you the glory. Hallelujah! We give you the glory. 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 We give you the glory.